Today I'm being joined by Donna Cooksey, who's a professional equine and human massage therapist. As many of you know, I have a 44-year-old pinto pony called Toby, and I've had him for the majority of my life. He has been looking a bit stiff lately, and I do like to keep on top of therapies like this, just so he's got a really good quality of life. There are not many ponies out there that are as old as Toby, so I do like to try and keep him comfortable and to keep him living as long as possible. Donna is a hands-on equine and human massage practitioner and she has 40 years experience. She's also incredibly knowledgeable as you'll see in this video. The session lasted for about an hour and it started with me having to walk and trot Toby up and down so she could see any lameness or any instabilities. She also took pictures of different areas such as his chest muscles and his spine alignment so that we could see the noticeable difference at the end of the session which I'm going to show you at the end of this video. As you can see, Toby's finding it quite difficult to stand square. You'll see how this is rectified at the end of this video. After the general assessment, Donna got to work and I'm just going to let the video run now so you can hear what she's saying and how Donna explains the full process and everything that she's doing. So I'm just checking the meridian line now to just see if there's any tension or any twinge, yes. anything, yep. any spasms or anything. I can't feel anything, any tension in the pole, but just to be on the safe side, I'm going to check the hole just to make sure. Get rid of your bit. <laughs> Usually, if there is anything, they start gurning. Yeah. Tossing their jaws over. Usually, if they haven't got any concerns, they'll just stand there with your hand in the mouth and not do anything. Boy, he just checking him out on the TMJ now. TMJ. For a massive to yourself. TK, my name. What are we doing? So he's had his eye removed, he might have a bit of scar tissue or something. Yeah, it was a bad eye. The um, lens dislodged and lodged into the back. That's why it had to come out. Yeah, so he could have a little bit of tension. He's only got 10% in his other eyes. Mm. So you can sometimes feel tension if you're, when you're rotating the ear, you can feel a peak. Yeah, in the ear? Yeah. Oh well, tension sort of like at the base. He's got nothing now, which is really good. Good boy. He's like a miracle pony. He just keeps going. Now this is called. We got the new two ligament that runs from the top of the pole all the way across the back. So you're checking that as well to see if there's any tension that goes on. Let me ask myself. Good boy. Good boy. Is that nice? Mm -hmm. So his pectorals are lovely and soft. Oh, that's wonderful. Yeah. Good boy, except nice. Good boy. So that moved gen lovely there. He says, I just want to get some dress now. <laughs> Good boy. 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 Good boy.
and the rhomboid at the front of the withers. So the rhomboid is deeper, so that's underneath the cervical physis muscle, but you've also got muscle called subclavius yeah. that runs down the front of the shoulder as well. So you should be able to pop that open. If that's nice and gentle, then it pops open. I mean, he's, in, he's an old boy, so he yeah. might, may have some arthritis somewhere, yes. but we can always check that when we do his mobilisation stretches as well. Usually if they've got, I find, for yourself, I find if they've got any problems within their pectorals, when you're palpating them like this, they like to lift their leg up and out or straight. Right. With the tension. But obviously his bracket of alicus muscle, it's very, very floppy. Very floppy. Very floppy, so he's really, really good. There's no tension there at all. So I'm just checking the deltoids now. See so if there's any tension around here. Good oh boy. Then we always do the biceps, don't we? And the triceps. Yes, we do. You always feel down. Go around the knee as well to see if you can feel any sort of like malformation of the bone. Mm -hmm. Any lumps or bumps. Just down to, boots, you can yeah, it's fine. Down to the fat lock joint. Always check around as well. See if there's any heat or anything, any swellings or anything around the fat lock. There's nothing there, which is good. Then this part here is called the thoracic sling. So you've got the thoracic trapezius and the cervical trapezius muscle. And also you've got the latimus dorsi muscle comes down here. This muscle across here is the longimus dorsi at the back. So obviously if they're doing any spasm, so if you go along and you see the horse twitch, then they've got a muscle spasm. So you just say if he did have one, what I'd do, I'd find the tension where he starts to go spasm. Yeah. I'd put my fingers where the vertebrae is and I'd start to stretch down slowly, always checking and looking at the skin. And then release, go over again. If there, if there was still tension there, you go down and you'd do it again until the spasm, spasm was released. Okay. So he has nothing across his back at all. So obviously, so obviously now you've got the lumbar region here. Mm -hmm. Hip bone, stifle. So I'm just checking across. Sometimes you'll find that a horse is really, really solid around the lumbar region here. So you do have to do quite a bit of work to soften the muscle fibres up. See, so once the muscle fibres are warm, mm -hmm. then you can get deeper. You can go a little bit further. There's a, yeah, there's a lot of muscle structures that we can't work on because they're too deep, we can't, we can't actually get to them. But then you've got the SI joint as well, which is just here. And a good indication of a good SI joint is where you can fit your finger in between. Yeah. yeah. So sometimes if they've, they're knobbly there, yeah. then you'll know that they've got SI restrictions. It's so like when you're saying you've got a, a problem yeah. with the lower part of your back, even though it's a solid bone structure, it has got some movement yeah. that it can sometimes lock. Yeah. So now I'm just palpating his blue teals just to warm the muscle fibres up again. So you've got the gluteals, then you've got the tensor fascia latte muscle, and then you've got the bicep femoris, which is there. You used to be ever so muscly and 20 years ago. Well, I'm not being funny, he's really, he's, he's very muscly for 44 years of age. 
I'll show you some exercises that I do to help arthritis in a minute. So obviously now I'm checking the hamstrings. So from the base of the dot going down. And I'm going to put it out there. I can't remember the all three names of the hamstrings, so they're just hamstrings to me because it's seven blah, 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 blah. So that's it. I just yes. I'm not a di I'm not a dictionary. I just know how to do my job. And then you've got the gracilis muscle, which is inside. And usually, if the horse has pulled themselves, yeah, yeah. So if they've pulled themselves there. You know, you have to be very careful why how you treat it because they can kick you. <laughs> yeah. Good boy. So this is around the bicep femoris area now. Are you nice? Is that nice? This is us as going to sleep now, he says. And again, like you do with the front leg. You go down, check in to feel if you can feel any lumps, any heat. Right, so if a horse has got heat and ten and they're tender, then that's what's classed as an active trigger point. So it's fresh, they've probably just done it the other day or whatever. Then you can get dormant trigger points which feel like hard lumps. They can be uncomfortable, sometimes there's no pain but they have been there for a while. Again, checking around the fetlock and that to see if there's any swellings or anything like that. And there's nothing. Good boy. Look at that. Good boy. So now we'll do the same on the other side. You're gonna move over for me, matey. This is no sod off. Come on. Good boy. So again, checking round the ear. Good boy. Good lad. Have a nice rotate. Good boy. Is that nice? So we'll see if he reacts on this side how he did the other side, because obviously he's got his eye on this side, hasn't he? He's only got 10% vision in that one, yeah. Well, just thinking on around the masseter muscle, he was quite etsy around that area, wasn't he? When I was palpating it, obviously, because they have to go quite deep to remove the eye, don't they? It really knocked him about. Yeah. But he's not showing any, any tension. Is this side better than the other? Yeah, yeah, yeah. The thing is, scar tissue, can be broken down yeah so if you have got like yourself if you've pulled a muscle or you've had surgery then like even if you've had a knee replacement a hip replacement and that you will get scar tissue so a massage will slowly break those fibers down yeah. and relax them so yeah. you've got more mobility yeah you can also stop it now you can also stop it now so again, checking round. And you can also move the neutral ligament. There we go. Because your fingertips can, they feel so much. Has Ellie been bitten here? Yeah, okay. So it might be a little bit sore around there, might you, matey? So again, just checking the brachiophallicus as well. Going on to the sternum. Into the pectorals. Good boy. Is that nice? See how his skin glides. So that means he's got fresh blood and nutrients and oxygenated blood all around his body. So that's a good point. 
This is a very good sign if you can pinch, yeah? And it goes back. Now, if they had lack of um, nutrients and fluid in their, in their system, you'd pinch the skin and it'd stay up. Also, you'll find, like with a horse that's got tension sometimes in its bicep femoris at the back of the leg, you'll fly. The skin can feel like cardboard, literally, and that's because there's no fresh blood and oxygen getting there, so you have to really palpate and get out the blood, fresh blood flowing to the area. Yeah. So I'm being a creepy or something? No, no, it's not. No. For that, this shoulder pops right open, which is absolutely brilliant. Look at that. So you, you know horses haven't got a scapula as well. A scapula. A um, <laughs> collarbone. Really? Oh, I didn't know. Yeah, horses have, do not have collarbones. So again, just going down. Left the dorsi down to the pectorals, because the pectorals start here and end about here. So they are a big muscle. Taken, little boy. Is that nice? He's gone really, really relaxed now, hasn't he? Again, check it across again. One there is nothing across his back either, which is really, really good. So again, over the lumbar region. He was, the, the main thing, he was tightening that muscle to muscle yeah. on his near side where he's had his eye surgery. So we go from the point of hip to SI joint. Are you rocking? See, this is another good thing to use as well if you think there's anything wrong with the horse's back. Hands and buttock. And see how his vertebrae moves across in his back? Yeah, see his vertebrae move? Now, if there's any restrictions, you can't do that. If, there's a, if the horse is really restricted, it won't even let you put your hand there. So he's absolutely fine across his long mustache, which is really good. He's absolutely fine, bless him. I mean, he might struggle with the mobilisation stretches, but we'll have a look. He is showing a little bit of tension in his gracilis muscle, whether it's just because he's rocking, he's going a little bit tight. It might be because he's trying to get his balance, yeah, a little bit. I say, if he was really sore there, he'd have kicked me by now. Good boy. You're beautiful, aren't you? When my sister was little, she used to stand underneath him when it rained. Good boy. Again, check in. See if there's any swellings, any heat. Good boy. You gonna lift your leg for me? Oh. So I always rotate the hoof. Now he doesn't feel as if he's got any restrictions there at all. So you can feel it's moving. Sometimes if they've got arthritic changes, it's, mm -hmm. it's solid. I always bring the foot up to the elbow, which he can do. So to me, he has no arthritic changes in his knees. I take the leg back. All right, baby boy, get your balance. Take the leg back. Then I rotate the shoulder. If they have got restrictions in their shoulder, if you do this gently, then it releases as well. Then I bring the leg forward, I bring it down. 
Oh boy. Then I'll bring it up. A bit like Pilates. Good boy. There we go. For an oldie. Yeah. Good boy. Alright. So I'm going to do the other leg first before I go to his back ones. So again. Rotate. The hoof. We're absolutely fine. Heel goes to elbow. Well, end of the toe goes to elbow. So that's absolutely fine. Bring his leg back. Really, really good. Rotate. Good boy. Then bring the leg forward. Hold it low to start off with. Hello, sweet pea. Bring it up. Then down. Up. And down. Up. And down. Usually if you do this and they have got any problems within their shoulders, you'll feel the restriction. Sometimes you'll hear a big crack as well. And that's just like sometimes the air gets stuck in the between the bone and it pop, you know, like where you bend and you your knees crack. No. Similar. Right then. Come on, Poppet. You can pick this one up for me or we're going to be awkward. I just let them do the stretch themselves. Let him find his comfort zone with it. Don't force it, don't pull it. He pulls back, you go with him. You let him find his comfort area. They're better off having the leg in front of the other leg like he's got now. Look, if you come round here, that is an absolutely amazing stretch for a 44 year old. That is absolutely brilliant. So then what we do is we do the back leg stretch. Stretch out, that was my knee by the way, not his. Good boy. This one. Oh. And again, let him come to you with it. Let him stretch through. He's come right across. It pulls back, just hold it, let him relax again. You don't fight because if there is any problems, you're tearing. Well, if you see he has got any issues, you'd make it worse. Now, his hind leg has come right over in front of his front one. So let him relax again. Good boy. And sometimes you can put them to the floor and if they put all their weight on the floor, then they can hold that stretch and that what that also does is the it does the SI joint and the point of hit uh, the, the the gluteals, the bicep femoris, terms facial artery, just stretches out hamstrings. So you ask for it back. You do it gently with them. Just place your hand on top of the hop and let him point his toes. Good boy. Then there's the tail stretch. Yeah, because the tail is the vertebrae. It's the end of the, the, the last thing of the back. So it's a nice stretch. Then you bring it round and if you watch him in a minute, he'll go up. His abdomen will come up. His goes tight here and again on the opposite side see it comes up good boy and you can also massage the tail so sometimes if you've got a horse that's going around with a wonky tail massage all the way down 
I mean, if he had any concerns with the um, sternophallicus, brachiophallicus muscle and what have you, then I'd do some baited stretches with him, asking him to bring his head round towards the flank area. I don't ask them to bring it down here. I tried to get the horse to bring it up there. Yeah, yeah. Sometimes they can't do it. If they can't do it, you see, as far as they can stretch, take their head back, give them a treat, and then try again. Do that a couple of times, five times, then again through the leg, so there's more or less bowing, and then on the opposite side as well. So, look at that. Toby can stand square now. He's definitely a lot more comfortable. Donna only found the two areas that were uncomfortable for him. She actually said that she couldn't believe his age and that his muscle tone was like that of a two-year-old. I'm so proud of this old man. And having this therapy done has really made me feel a lot better because he has been stiff lately and I do always worry with the fact that he's so old and whether I'm doing the right thing in keeping him going. Thank you for watching this video and don't forget to give it a like if you found it useful and subscribe to my channel so that you can see other really fascinating videos just like this one.